Hey everyone, this is Ninja Talks, and we are going to be doing Insane again up to the catfish. So, if you guys haven't seen the first part, it'll be up below. You could click the little exclamation mark card, or you could click it at the end of this video to see part one up to the barbarian boss on Insane. So picking up where we left off, if you guys need to buy potions, remember to go back to normal mode to buy your potions until we get the Thieves Forest. Which is right here, the Thieves Store. So we have to beat the Thieves Forest. But we left off at Forest Entrance, so let us go. So in Forest Entrance, these trees sometimes give you food, so if you need health, destroy them. So you won't use your potions immediately. You could get on the Yoshi if you want to, just start swinging all around. If you're not good with combos, this way would be much easier. Just watch out for their arrows, because they will knock you out and take, you know, your Yoshi. For the big guy, you could use your magic. You could get off your Yoshi if you want. Use your magic, careful, or you could get off and use your arrows and run away. I would suggest just beating the little guys first before you go for the big guy as he does throw you all around and then you'll just start getting hit. Or you could also use your magic on him which will actually speed up the situation so you don't have to use your arrows and just run away. As you saw, the magic was very effective on him and killed him pretty instantly. If you don't have good magic, like I said on the first part, you could just use your arrows run away or just hit him a couple of times and move back. Remember the trees do give you health, so hit as many of the little trees as possible. You are going to want to save your potions for the later runs. So you don't have to restart the level. Just take care of these guys. And like I said before, if you're good at combos, you really won't need to stay on the Yoshi for very long. And the bipolar bear will attack them once they're weak. So that is also a plus. If your stats are low though, there was a comment recommendation and they said to switch your pets for a pet that gives you a stat boost until you max out everything. And then once you max out everything, then you could switch to Bipolar Bear or you could keep them just to get an upgraded stat boost. But it's up to you and it's up to your playstyle how you want to do this. For me, I am going to stick with the Bipolar Bear so he could attack them and I won't really have to worry about doing an enormous amount of combos. If they do get on the Yoshi just like you saw, they won't do their initial 48 damage or their initial amount of damage. If they do bite you with Yoshi, it'll only do 5, which is actually better than taking a full blown hit. Also, if you do get hit by their arrows, which they arrow a lot at this part, you will take 56 damage if your defense is all the way up. If your defense isn't all the way up, you will take more damage. Remember also to break the little grasses that there are around. There are going to be little grass patches around. Sometimes they do drop items, so it's better just to start swinging as much as you can so you don't miss any health items like I just got a banana off of that one so just start swinging around for all these health uh, items that you might miss remember also to pick up the money if you still need to buy weapons the money is very beneficial and you need money for your potions in the first video I also said if you think you're gonna die a lot remember to hold your potions on the B so you could just use it 
as soon as you get to low health. If you don't think you're gonna die, you could also just switch out to the arrows and just start spamming arrows. If you get them to the corner and you have max agility, you could literally just keep them in the corner and kill them like this. And the bipolar bear will finish them off as soon as they get to low health. Be careful not to let your bipolar bear get switched or any pet that you have. There are going to be pets like the seahorse around and it will make it more difficult if they do get switched because you won't have your primary pet and you will have to go back to the blacksmith to get your primary pet back and I don't think you're going to want to do that because if you lose your primary pet let's just say you don't notice and you do complete the stage then it'll just make it more difficult for you also the combo I am using I usually just jump left stick x x x x x and then Y to smack them on the floor and keep them in the air longer when you think they're about to fall out of your grip just double Y and you will be able to move them wherever you want also use the boomerang to break walls and doors much easier instead of swinging 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 just take out your boomerang and one fully charged boomerang will break any door remember to take the money don't let these guys take the money these guys won't hurt you so you don't really have to worry about those little goblin things Worry about everyone else though. Watch out for their arrows. And the bipolar bear will take care of that. There is always going to be a turkey leg in this chest. So just save that. Also, the trolls do drop a lot, a lot of food. This is the part that you are gonna be grinding your levels if you need to grind out your character, but I would suggest instead of Bipolar Bear, if you are gonna grind out your levels, you would use Giraffe Feet instead. Also be careful not to hit the chest, as you saw me do. If you hit the chest, you will lose the turkey leg, it will despawn. As you see it on the top left of my screen, you see that my experience bar is going up really, really fast at this part because of all the trolls that are spawning and you will also hit the troll mother a couple of times if you are gonna grind this out just make sure to dodge the troll mother sometimes she does she does have an enormous amount of HP though so you're not really gonna have to worry about that unless you are focusing on her if you are focusing on her you can just start attacking her and drop bombs on her. I actually don't have any bombs on her. But you could just unload your bombs on her and it will kill her pretty fast. Or if you don't have any bombs like I don't, you could just use your magic or camp in the corner and use your arrows. But it's kind of hard to use your arrows at this part since the trolls might sneak up behind you. So I would just suggest using your regular attack and magic attack to give yourself a little lift like that and just keep doing that over and over if you're low on health remember you do have five potions if you bought the potions before or the drops that they drop just pick up the fruit you can pick up the fruit quickly if you are using the fencer or the industrialist just spam your magic it will stun her for a little bit, the troll mother. Also remember that if you do level up, or you're about to die and you're about to level up, it will fully heal you also. So if you think you're about to die and you're about to level up, just remember that once you level up, you will heal everything back. So that's yeah, also good for those of you who didn't know that. Just make sure not to stay on the ground also for too long. The trolls will attack you. 
and they will kill you in a mere matter of seconds. So the air is your best bet on this part. Once the troll mother takes too much damage also, when she's about to die, she is going to start to run around, so you are going to need to chase her. Just keep following her. Just like I said, watch out for the trolls at the bottom, so you're going to want to keep jumping. As much as you can, unless there's food, then take it, then jump back up. And follow her, follow her, follow her as much as you can. If you get the chance to unload your magic, just unload it on her. She is going to take a little while. Most bosses on Insane do take a little while. Even if you have the right amount of magic and even if you drop the bombs in the beginning, they do take a little while. So just be patient. Don't try to rush her even when she has a little HP because the trolls on the floor will kill you pretty fast. So even with that little HP, just, you know, be patient. The next part is the deer part where you have to dodge the walls and the stuff on the floor. So you aren't going to need to technically be fully healed, but just in case you could always heal yourself. If you already figured out the pattern on normal, then you won't really have such a big problem with this part. Also, if you do have a slight problem with this part, just follow the deers, the CPU deers. They will always lead you to the right path and you could stand pretty far back as is. Just be careful not to get hit by him by moving too far back as to see the path in front of you while following the CPUs because they will go to the right path automatically. So you'll just stand as far back as you can and then just follow their lead. As long as you're behind one of the computers, you know you're in the right place. When they jump, you know there's a log in front of you, so you're going to want to jump with them. If they move up or down, left or right, wherever they move, just follow their lead like I said before. And also, if you don't have the achievement at this part, you will unlock the achievement, which is to do this flawlessly without getting hit, as long as you just stick back and just let the computers do the work and jump when you need to jump, you should be good. You don't want to waste any of your valuable potions on any other part unless it's fighting monsters or barbarians or bosses. Under those circumstances, you don't really want to waste your potions at this part. Eventually you will spawn on the water. You will get to the water part. There should be two fruits or three fruits in the water. Pick them up. Watch out for the sharks. And also watch out for the bats as they do try to get you off your, your log. So the sharks could attack you. If you keep attacking the bats though, you do get a lot of air time. My best suggestion if you are using the fencer or the industrialist is to magic the, the sea creatures on the floor. If you don't have the magic, you could always get close to them and attack or just arrow. But you're going to want to watch out for the bats because if they do get next to you like you saw, they do start sucking your blood and you do get stunned for a little bit. So you're going to want to arrow them also out of the sky or magic. You could also do combos, just go in the air and just attack like this. Whatever makes it easier for you, you're just going to want to get rid of the bats first. Those are your primary targets because they will follow you and keep following you until they get all on you. There are a lot of fruits at this part. So pick up as many, as many fruits as you can to fully heal so you don't waste your potions. The catfish is at the ending of this stage. So that is going to be our focus for this part. 
So for the catfish on an insane, just like normal mode, you are gonna have to wait for him to spit out his cat ball and then dodge. Break the cat, uh, the catfish's cat ball, then dodge. Spam your magic, dodge again. Once he screams, dodge again. Don't get an initial hit. You don't want to get punched. You don't want to use your lose your log, your whatever you're on, your rafter, your magic carp, as I call it. You don't want to lose any of those. So just break the cat ball, dodge, wait for the cannonball to hit, unload whatever attack you're gonna unload on the catfish, and then dodge again. Wait for him to stop punching. He's gonna go under the water. Just dodge him while he's under the water. Don't get hit by him. Use your magic jump if you have to. Once he hits the boat, he's gonna go back to normal position. Hit him with a couple of arrows if you want. Do some damage to him. And then dodge again. Then attack him regularly. As soon as you hit the, the cannonball hits him, attack him regularly. Or with whatever attack you're gonna attack him with. And you should beat the catfish on insane. Beating the catfish on insane, I think, also unlocks a character. But at this point, we're just focusing on beating insane with your characters. And that should help you beat all the levels up to the catfish, hopefully. Remember, always, 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 once you beat any stage, go to the thief store, which you should have unlocked, or any store on normal or insane, and always buy your potions, always heal up. That is the main thing you should do before even attempting a level, because these levels are very difficult and you don't wanna make it to the ending and then lose a potion. That's the worst feeling in the world, trust me, it's happened to me multiple times. But for next time, I'm gonna do everything until Parade, which is right here, which is quite a difficult boss that we have to face in Parade and Wedding Crashers. And that one is gonna take some time. But anyway, thank you for stopping by. This has been Ninja Talks. Hopefully this guide has helped you. And if you wanna see part one to insane on how to do the barbarian boss it is gonna be on a clickable link at the ending but i hope these guides are helpful and i will see you guys next time